Paul just as highlighted today, we'll be looking at uh, two key things here uh, in Nigeria's polity faster as it moves towards the 2023 election. One of the leading candidates has already given his intention to run, and that's uh, Shuaju Fala Tinubu. And of course, uh, his director general is uh, meant to be with us here in the course of the program. But again, uh, many people have thrown their hearts, uh, apart from Volatinovu, into the ring of the Nigerian presidency, but only a few have been successful. It provides adequate experience, views and opinions of situations. Currently, uh, there is uh, the announcement uh, by Nigeria's former Senate President Aim Pius Aim. Uh, Governor Dave Umahi of uh, uh, Ebony State and Oji Uzokalu, uh, plus uh, the Governor of Kogi State, Yahya Belo, all still set to be making consultations. Former presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar is still expected to run. Names like former Senate President of Nigeria, Bukola Saraki, and Aminu Tambo, the Governor of Sokoto State, have also made the rounds. There's a whole lot to take from this and the second. We come back, we dig in deep to speak in with one of Nigeria's presidential candidates in the last election, M. Suleiman. Well, the national leader of the All Progressives Congress has uh, been at the center of Nigeria's politics since 1999. Some would say even before 1999. But he's won some, lost some, been with the opposition and stood by the ruling. Perhaps the most talked about politician in Nigeria today, despite not holding any political office since 2007. And uh, for the last seven years, He's, had, uh, he's actually dined with the Nigerian leadership and played an instrumental role in the emergence of President Buhari, who uh, divides uh, opinions amongst the Nigerian populace. Tinubu's interest in Nigeria's presidency has sparked debates and questions have been asked of his plans, purpose, past and present in Nigeria. Joining me on the square today to provide answers to some of the questions Nigerians are asking and give more insight on the presidential ambition of Bola Tinubu is Honorable Abdul Mumin Jibrain, who is the Director General of Bola Ahmed Tinubu Support Groups Management Council. And of course, uh, pretty much later, uh, he's here with me live in the studios, Dr. Shino Fagmar Byron, who is uh, a former presidential candidate. I'll be here also to take us through some of uh, the key things on such a big moment as presidential elections. But let, let's quickly start with you, um, Honorable uh, Jibrain. Uh, once again, thanks for your time and thanks for joining us here on uh, uh, VSA on New Central Television. Now, a lot of questions at the moment, uh, Nigerians and Africans knew you were coming on the show. And uh, I'll do well to take some questions from the people. Uh, and of course, uh, some of our questions here from uh, the students. But basically, let's start by asking you uh, the chances of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu winning the ticket of the APC, because that's the very first step to the entire big stage. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Suleiman. Um, I've always said uh, Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu is a front runner uh, in the uh, 2023 presidential uh, election. Uh, whether within the APC or you look at it beyond the APC uh, all through the PDP and other political parties that uh, will be uh, putting up candidates to contest in that uh, the election. And I think um, uh, the answer is not far, far-fetched. Uh, uh, Tinebu uh, has a very lengthy uh, pedigree, deep pedigree in, uh, in politics. Uh, uh, coming up as a, as a senator from the private sector, uh, retiring as a treasurer uh, from uh, mobile, uh, getting into uh, the, the Senate uh, at a pretty young age, uh, joining the pro-democracy struggle, uh, getting on to become governor of uh, Lagos State, uh, the winning a re-election, uh, surviving uh, what uh, 
popularly is called uh, the tsunami at death, but the only governor who actually survived it, and continued to contribute his quota to the development, to the building of the opposition party in Nigeria to strengthen our democracy and eventually making history as one of those that contributed uh, to the emergence of uh, an opposition party defeated an incumbent in uh, 2015. So uh, his uh, pedigree is what people are looking, his vast knowledge, his vast network, his investment in people and uh, the system, and uh, the, his, his goodwill cutting across all part of the country. And he's somebody that has been very outspoken. So people know what he is bringing on the table. They understand that uh, he understands the politics of the country very well. They know that he understands the economy of the country very well. They know that he knows the people. He knows the country and he knows the people very well. All these are factors that combined to make him uh, a front runner in the, in the election. And I believe that these factors uh, will count uh, when uh, 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 we, we, we go to the ballot to vote. Well, uh, uh, Honorable Jibrin, uh, you know, as reported uh, today by one of Nigeria's leading newspapers, The Punch, three governors and the Attorney General of the Federation are pushing for what they call a consensus candidate to block uh, Mr. Tinubu. Uh, and I'm quite sure you must have seen that report. Uh, uh, your reaction will help uh, forge uh, uh, the opinion of some Nigerians on this. Honestly, I haven't seen it. I haven't read it. So if, if that is the case, if uh, that is what exactly is happening, that some governors within the APC are forming an alliance to see that he doesn't emerge, because the primaries, uh, you, you, you're one of Nigeria's, uh, Africa's finest politician, the primaries is the first step uh, to any big election. So what if that is? What if that is the case? I, I, I believe that uh, even if uh, you decide to move for consensus within the uh, APC, it will be a very, very difficult you know, for you not to arrive at uh, Tenebu because uh, he is the most uh, popular person within uh, within the party. Uh, when you uh, take away President Muhammadu Buhari, Tenebu remains uh, the second most influential politician within the party. That's fact. This is something that everybody knows. And I believe that any day, any time, if you decide to hold an election uh, to decide uh, uh, on a popularity within uh, the party, uh, Tinubu will, uh, will emerge. So I believe uh, that, uh, yes, looking for consensus is not a bad idea. But I'm quite positive that uh, it will be difficult to have a consensus that it is not Tinubu that will emerge as the consensus candidate. But again, you know, in a democracy, it's always good to keep level playing ground, allow everybody uh, to come out to, uh, to contest. And let's go and appear before the people and, uh, and, and let them determine who they want. You know, you know, before you get to the people, there is uh, the national convention. So how will the unending postponement of the national convention affect the race for the party's ticket? Well, this evening, the party uh, came out and uh, release a statement signed by the secretary of the party that the convention uh, will uh, will hold in uh, in February. Uh, so uh, we are positive that uh, uh, whatever issues that are there will be resolved, and uh, we will uh, we'll move on. Um, uh, let's take this uh, from uh, you know one of our viewers, uh, Eguando Tone, and he says. Uh, uh, Honorable Jibrain, what should Nigerians expect from uh, uh, your candidate, uh, Bola Tinubu? Should he pick the ticket? Is it a follow-up of the foundation of the current administration? <clears throat> expect a very vibrant political atmosphere. Uh, expect uh, 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 improvement uh, uh, on our democratic uh, process uh, as far as the politics is concerned. Uh, expect uh, more openings for young people. He's done that, building people here and there. Uh, expect that uh, a lot of opportunities will be given to uh, younger people. Uh, also expect that uh, we are going to uh, see uh, uh, an, uh, an improvement from where President Bahari stopped as far as the economy is concerned. We all know that he's grounded on uh, economic matters. He understands the economy of this country like the palms of his hands. So uh, he is going to re-energize uh, the uh, economic sector, uh, both uh, the public sector and the private uh, the 
sector, of course, you know that uh, it's always have uh, a business mind. So uh, I believe that uh, these are things that we should expect. You should also expect uh, uh, a consolidation on uh, the unity of uh, the, the, the country, uh, uh, bringing up more uh, dynamism in, in uh, the fight against uh, insurgent, uh, improving the security situation of uh, the country. Generally, uh, we should expect uh, more prosperity coming on board uh, when uh, 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 Astro Bola Ahmed Tinibu emerges as a president in 2000. Let me bring in this uh, quickly here because you rank amongst. Uh, some of the uh, youngest, uh, you know, politicians in Nigeria, yourself and the governor of Kogi State, Yahya Bello, and uh, uh, you're, you're, you're fine academic. You hold up a, a doctorate degree. So Nigerians are asking, uh, what do you have to say of Nigeria producing a president who uh, is uh, within the age bracket of 45 to 50? Is there hope in the next 20 years that Nigeria will see that? Well, I, I believe that um, it's a possibility, uh, but again, uh, that has uh, linked us up with uh, uh, this issue uh, that, of course, is a burning issue of uh, generational shift, uh, getting uh, a younger person uh, to run for the president or moving the presidency to another generation uh, of uh, people. And I've always said that... Uh, uh, good leadership is not a function of uh, age. You can be young and be a bad leader. You can be old and be a good leader. The most important thing that we should focus on uh, is uh, its competence. In terms of the possibility of a younger person emerging as uh, the president, it's possible. But it can only be a possibility or a reality when the young people come together to promote a young candidate. So I get that call. To be honest with you, even me, when I'm campaigning for a soldier, I see people, they would say, why don't you put up yourself? Why are you campaigning for an older person? I said, I don't put up myself. You people, if you are interested and you believe that I will be a good president, you put yourself together, organize yourself, and come and promote me. The way I have organized people around me to go and promote Aswaju. So younger people have to be smart to understand that the process and the system is not automated. It's human system. And so you have to move. It's beyond to sit down and uh, criticize or to say, I don't want a candidate when you don't have a substitute. Or when you have the substitute, what are you doing to promote your own uh, candidate? So that's what I want to see. I don't want to see people just talking about, oh, let's, let's have generational shift. I want to see somebody showing it in action. So what have you done or what are you doing in that uh, regard? It's the possibility. But young people have to come together, organize themselves, not cajole to do it, not coerce to do it, not compelled to do it. It has to be something that young people will have to do willingly to uh, be able to, uh, uh, to uh, push uh, uh, younger people up, uh, up there. But to be honest with you, if I had seen a younger person now within the system, that I believe that in terms of experience, in terms of competence, in terms of pedigree, in terms of reliability, in terms of ability to hold the party and subsequently hold the country together, in terms of uh, capacity to pick the right persons and put in the right places to give results, in terms of ability to forgive and forget, in terms of ability uh, to show goodwill, to dish out goodwill and, and rest, if I had seen somebody better than uh, Aswaju at this moment of our politics in this country, I would have gone for that person, but I haven't seen any. If you have seen any, Suleiman, tell me. Well, anyway, uh, uh, while, while that search is on, uh, I'll share with you some of the worries of uh, young Nigerians, and uh, your response will, uh, will be uh, needed here. Uh, looking at the views expressed by some against his ambition on the question of age and health. Okay. Uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the issue of uh, uh, age, uh, I, I think, uh, interestingly, uh, yesterday, I had an exchange with another media house, and I respect to that. And... Uh, 
I, I, I choose to respond that the way uh, they presented uh, it because, uh, in all fairness, I, I felt uh, the, lab, uh, the body language was uh, a bit too uh, hostile and we are drif drifting away from uh, the key issues that Nigerians should uh, will be interested in. In terms of uh, their age, uh, Aswaju is uh, 69 uh, years uh, old, uh, and of course. Uh, it, it's a uh, matter of a public uh, knowledge. Every year he celebrates his uh, his, uh, his birthday, and I believe that at 69 he is not uh, too old to be an effective uh, president. I, I give an uh, the, the example that the president Bari over 70 years. Yes, you could say uh, he fell sick when God will come back, and he has been working smoothly. You never had that one day on the job uh, he collapsed. So I believe that. Uh, uh, as well just uh, age is not going to be an uh, impediment. Then on the uh, on the on the on the other hand, I think you 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 talked about uh, yes. age and his health and, and, and his health. I when people talk about it, his health, it, I, it amazes me. Everybody falls uh, sick. You do fall sick today when I do fall sick, and I tell people that during the course of the year, I fell ill myself, and for about a month. I was uh, uh, attending to my to my health, but you know the reason why you and I, when we fall sick, nobody cares about it is because we are not as well, because we are not front runners in the 2023 presidential uh, election. So every we can get away with uh, with mother, but uh, for as well, everything all his life is under uh, uh, scrutiny. He got ill. It was a matter of public knowledge. Went out of the country. It was a matter of public uh, knowledge to seek medical uh, attention. Got well, recovered, came back to the country, and continue his activities normal. While he is moving and making progress, people are still here talking about his health. So you see, these are all uh, uh, these are all issues that uh, I think uh, we should um, move away from uh, that and, and focus on uh, important matters. Uh, and, you know, in politics, uh, uh, well, in, in Nigerians, uh, uh, for what they call inclusive uh, politicking, uh, perhaps, um, you're, 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 what is the country, um, what should the country expect in terms of running mate, especially now that the Christian Association of Nigeria is insisting on uh, no Muslim Muslim ticket? Uh, well, um, uh, the issue of uh, uh, running mate is uh, exclusively the decision of uh, the, the candidate. And I believe that uh, when uh, Aswaju emerges as the candidate, he will uh, decide uh, who uh, will be his, uh, his, uh, his running mate. And uh, uh, I have always said that uh, he's a man of experience. He's gone through this process over and over and over again. And I don't think we're going to have problem when we come to that. I believe that uh, he's going to do justice to, uh, to that, and uh, uh, he will uh, make the right decision uh, for the country and decision that will help uh, uh, him consolidate on all the good works that uh, he's been uh, doing. So I think when we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. So, so how united is your party? Because many believe that the APC is not united at the moment, which may affect the chances of the party. Uh, the general election. Do you think the party can get its act together just before 2023? A political party is a cocktail of interest. And when you have a, co a cocktail of uh, uh, interest, you have uh, you could have primary interest, secondary interest, uh, much more higher level interest, etc. So you have layers, just like uh, several layers in a uh, uh, a piece, uh, 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 a, a bunch of uh, onion. Uh, so, uh, when you talk about uh, the unity within a political party, if you say because there's a crisis in a political party, and that means the party is not united, it means that all over the world you are not going to have a single political party that you could call a party that is unity within that party. Because practically every political party in the world are busy managing crisis, and it's is. Uh, a constant phenomenon because there will naturally be crises all the time within uh, the political party. But it is the way and the manner that these crises are managed that matters. So in the case of APC, APC is not an exception. APC has uh, is a large party, perhaps the, the biggest party in uh, 
in Africa with a lot, a lot of uh, people, high profile people, mid low profile people, all over packed together in one political party. So when there is disagreement or misunderstanding, you should understand that that is bound to uh, uh, to happen. But again, as you can see, the leaders of the party are going, uh, are working day and night, consulting, uh, talking here and there, post trading, going on, uh, negotiation, discussions are going on. And I'm pretty sure at the end of the day, we will be able to resolve a lot of these uh, issues. But I do not think that the party is disunited. Well, um, the, the question from David watching us now live in Nairobi is, what kind of support is your candidate getting from northern Nigeria? Oh, interesting. I have said this uh, repeatedly. Everywhere you go in another part of the, uh, the country, Saswaju, you saw the uh, event in Kano uh, last uh, week or, or there about that was uh, a lot of people were not even invited there. So everywhere you go, you go on the streets, you go to the market, you go everywhere, everybody is talking about Aswaju, 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 Aswaju. Believe me, by the time the campaign starts, Suleiman, Nigerians will be shocked the, 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 how popular and how loved Aswaju uh, the kind of love that Aswaju has in the uh, northern part of the country, which of course got across all over the country as well. But is that what politics is about? Because the, the word out there, I think uh, perhaps maybe uh, David has been reading quite a lot of Nigerian politics, is that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the way you've highlighted it is not the way it seems. Uh, on D-Day, uh, you're likely not to get that support. Now, categorically speaking, how much of a reaching out or support does Bola Chinibu have, first within the APC caucus in northern Nigeria and some other, uh, you know, influential party people in the north? Well, um, altogether, again, if you look at the previous uh, response I gave you, I actually... Uh, but by implication, answered the, uh, the, this question. He enjoys massive support from uh, 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 from our elders, uh, from, uh, from the youth, uh, the women, and, and the rest. And um, uh, that again uh, is not too far from the reality of uh, uh, what he has contributed in building the opposition party in Nigeria. Uh, and uh, they're quite happy and appreciative how he has been loyal to President Muhammadu uh, Bahari and all the support he's been giving to uh, the APC. Uh, they've been taking uh, note of that. You think uh, they've, they've not been taking note? They've been taking note of that. And uh, so he has served the system. He has made sacrifice for the system. He has never worked against the system. He's embraced the system, supported the system, promoted the system. And, you know, I keep telling people that, look, this is the time that the system will reward this gentleman. Well, I know the manifesto is not out yet, but again, if you will, give us a sense of what to expect in terms of uh, uh, the economy and security. Well, uh, of course, you know, these are all uh, contained in his uh, strategic, uh, strategic plan. And uh, I will rather prefer, but uh, uh, there are things that uh, he might be talking about during his uh, declaration and, of course, subsequent uh, bigger uh, uh, events that will follow during the uh, campaign. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, just assuring Nigerians that uh, he will build uh, effectively from uh, where Pastor Mahamadou Bahari stops and ensure that... Uh, the economy grows stronger uh, and, uh, of course, uh, inclusive uh, growth, uh, the, the, what they call, they used to call trickle down uh, effects and the rest. But I would prefer to stop uh, there, not to uh, let uh, uh, the cut out uh, so that uh, uh, when the time comes, you'll be able to hear it from uh, the man himself. Before I let you go, Honorable Jibreen, uh, quickly help us here. What's the place of Nigeria's southeast region in the politics of the APC? Well, I, I have tried to uh, 
uh, to uh, uh, say this all the time. Uh, I have a lot of friends from the southeastern part of the country. I've had opportunity to work with uh, a lot of fantastic uh, people from the southeastern part of the country. I also believe that uh, uh, the southeastern part of the country has a very, very qualified, competent people that can become president of uh, Nigeria. But I think uh, they need to be more strategic. Uh, they need to uh, come back to what they used to be because in Nigeria, if you want to be the president, you must play center politics. You must join a, a party that is uh, caught across uh, the entire uh, the, uh, country. Yes, uh, uh, the, 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 the southeastern part of the country has always uh, played the center politics. But in the last few uh, years, uh, they somehow reclined to uh, regional uh, politics. And I think that has cost them a bit. Meanwhile, the southwestern part of the country now realizing that uh, they cannot be able to make the presidency uh, alone, they decided to come out in a strategic way and play center politics. And uh, that is why now they are favored to produce the next uh, uh, president. And apart from that, I believe that the South is a part of the country need to come out and really show that they are serious uh, about it and they want uh, they want it in a proper democratic uh, manner, uh, lobbying, uh, getting across, uh, reaching out, building bridges uh, across the country, building trust and, and the rest, then uh, promoting uh, the, the best of best that can be acceptable to other part of the, uh, the, the country. I've not seen many of them uh, coming out, uh, except the last one or two days where we have a uh, pious uh, I am declaring that, of course, uh, yesterday you have uh, Ome here and, of course, uh, Ojuzo Kalu uh, giving just uh, a bit of a, a skimish of uh, speeches uh, to uh, that uh, they are contesting for the president. We need to see a bit of a serious uh, approach, particularly in the party that they are dominant, which is the PD, which is the PDP, uh, we need to see them play that role because uh, by the time that uh, the PDP zone uh, the uh, uh, presidency to the northern part of the country, it shows that the eastern part of the country are not uh, ready for uh, the presidency yet. Dr. Abdul Mumin Jibrain, many thanks for speaking with us here on PSA. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure, and I look forward to coming back over and over again. Well, when we come back after the break, Dr. Shino Fagmero Byron joins us. Stay with us. It's just a year to the big moment for Nigerians to elect a new president and we have opened a series of uh, talks here on VSA leading up to that election. Joining me now is Dr. Shino Fagmero Byron. He's a lawyer and a former presidential candidate. Uh, good to see you and thanks for coming. Thank you very much, Suleiman. Thank you very much for having me uh, here. And, uh, I'm excited having you because uh, the, the, it's always good to, to have people um, who have actually uh, gone through the process. process yes. uh, but before we start talking about yeah. that, leading up to, uh, again to this election, uh, I want your overview, your reaction yeah. to some of the things uh, Jibreen uh, said about uh, his candidate yes. he's rooting for. Well, um, without a doubt, um, Ashiwaju Tinubu is the candidate to beat in APC. And uh, if we 
except we want to really fool ourselves because and why is that you know he's probably the most influential person in that party um, beyond those who are actually in power um, we all have to recognize his political sagacity we have to recognize that as governor of uh, Lagos State um, he did demonstrate for me uh, when you leave power and whoever takes over you whoever takes over from you you structure things in a way that whoever takes over from you improves on what you do and is even better than you for me it's a sign of good management and good succession planning and i personally because of um, some of the proximity i had with working with lagos state uh, that time i do know of some of the you know significant uh, 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 things that he did that demonstrated one of the key um, uh, requirements for governance, and that's capacity. Um, having said that, it's not just capacity uh, that you need to, to be considered. Number one, Nigeria is in a particular state now. There are challenges that are there now not 2007 this is 2023 mm. right so the challenges now are somewhat different nigeria as an entire country is somewhat different from lagos as a state and then beyond capacity there are other things that and this is some of the issues that people want to interrogate from any candidate for you to uh, be in a position to deliver good governance. You need capacity, you need accountability, you know, and then you need to be responsive. One of the weaknesses of this current government is its inability to be responsive, taking six months to put in ministers, wanting to do things at your own pace not having a sensitivity or a sense of urgency staying in a comfort zone not understanding that other nigerians are feeling you know some pinch so all these things need to be put together to be able to evaluate and then the key question is what is the agenda what are the plans and what does the candidate believe in but by, by, by now, the agenda should be out. By now, people should know what he's actually standing for. You can't, I don't believe it's fair on Nigerians for any candidate to come out and say, this is me, you know me. But I'll tell you something, Winston Churchill, everybody knew Winston Churchill. He won the Second World War for Great Britain. But after the war, he stood for elections. The, the British people did not elect him again. And they told him that you were the Prime Minister for the civil, for the war. Now we want to build the peace, and so you may not fill that particular vacancy. Every every time requires a different set of skills, a different set of type of person, a different attitude, and a different set of knowledge. So, what I am saying in essence is that. Jubrin, yeah, he's, he's done quite a good job in trying to present his candidates. And anybody who wants to, except who wants to deceive ourselves, you can't take away from Tinubu what he has achieved. And for me, he's entitled to contest, but he has to, um, he will be interrogated. This is an interview. The presidency is just a job. It's not a chieftaincy title. It is not a reward for things done before. And he must take all questions. It is not a reward for things done before. It is an expectation of things we expect you to do. Another thing that might be a challenge to him is Nigerians are not very happy with the state of things right now. The trajectory is not very good. Either security, either economy, it's not there, the indices. So do in not other words, the gains or otherwise of the party may affect him. 
absolutely people will not but associate the current state and the current party and the current government with him. Because to a very large extent, he did really worked hard to get this government in place. And he sort of vouched for, you know, that the, the success and the possibility of this. Now, well, you could argue that, well, he's not in power. It's not him personally. But, you know, it's not him, but you, when you guarantee someone and the person fails, you must understand when people doubt you when you put yourself forward. Now, now let, let, let's start talking about uh, yeah. the, 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 the journey, yeah. uh, you know, uh, to this big moment. First, uh, let me ask a personal question. Yeah. Are you running this time? No, no, no. I wouldn't be running. I wouldn't be running. Except, um, as you say in Nigeria, except I'm dragged. <laughs> but I, I don't have any plans of running. No. Uh, and uh, you, you were the candidate for co op party? Yes, I was. Uh, you know, Nigerians. Uh, yeah. During the last election, Nigerians thought that some of these small parties, yes. uh, uh, they were going to make some incursion yes. into our political yes. space. Yes. And what really happened? Well, you know, to, to a very large extent, I think the mindset of Nigerians towards what type of president they want has not changed. A lot of Nigerians claimed they wanted younger people, newer people, and fresh faces. But when the younger people, newer people, and fresh faces came, they still ran after the old people. Partly because there was an issue of financing. You know, um, Nigerians would, I mean, look, whether we like it or not, a lot of Nigerians have been impoverished. The poverty rates have increased over the past four years. So a lot of Nigerians have been starved. Anyone who comes now and doesn't have plenty of money would not begin to start scratching the surface. This was what we found then. The second thing is this. Many Nigerians do not read manifestos, even the so-called educated ones. We don't read manifestos. We don't really care. When I went through my primaries in Kowa Party, there were three stages. And I believe that only Kowa Party and PDP were the only parties out of the 70 or so parties that had any primaries, go back to the records and see. We had an exam, written exam, then we had a debate. Then we had elections at the federal and at the state level. And that was how I emerged. And then my manifesto had, there was a pre-primary manifesto and a manifesto that I presented to the public, which was on my website. Most people will say, look, forget about the manifesto. What do you, you know, you know, this you, you, you is this you know, is typical how, in Nigeria. How, yeah. how can the country, how can yes. Nigeria take off that culture? Because I, I recall I watched the debate, yes. uh, and uh, it was only recently on the show yeah. we had Professor Pato told me, and he said, Nigerians must yeah. start to interrogate these people they are seeking to hire. So how can, how can that culture of questioning you know, or interrogating, interviewing these people, uh, that's the other word, debate. Well, you, you know, people, we have to be desirous of listening to what they have to say. You see, I believe that to a very large extent, and while I will credit the press for doing quite a good job, a lot of us Nigerians, we just want to be entertained. It is the difference between wanting to be entertained and wanting to listen to what the fellow has to say and interrogate what they have to say. I had an experience with the debates uh, three months after the president was sworn in. I got a letter from the organizers of one of the debates, not the channel's one, but one of the debates that happened in TVC, hmm. telling me they apologize that I actually was qualified to be invited. But by some computer glitch, I still have the, le the letter in Abuja. It was, um, you know. So there are different ways that people get excluded. I see, for example, interviewers running after people who don't want to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Whereas people who want to talk and have their say, you don't give them the light of day. Tomorrow you will say some people have been silent. But they're not. Look, the microphone belongs to the press. It belongs to the media. It is whoever you give the microphone to 
that his voice is loudest. And this is the role and this is the power of the media. There is an opportunity to listen to what people have to say. But are we really, really, really interested? And now you're talking about equal opportunities. That is what I'm saying. We have, we, we, you have to give, what I'm saying is a level playing field. And this goes back to the APC and their coming primaries. For APC to produce a candidate, the primaries they go through must be seen to be absolutely and totally transparent. Number one, many people will believe that Ashiwaju has an edge already, having control of several factors within the party. The, you remember the recent controversy between direct primaries mm. on indirect primaries? So, you see, Nigerians must learn. We, we must learn how to build a culture of inclusiveness and transparency. And that's why the, the factor of accountability is not just uh, what we mouth, you know. We have to demonstrate some level of openness and fairness. And that is why you get Nigeria is 200 million people. And I can bet you, you have every problem in this country. You have enough Nigerians to solve those problems, be it scientific problems, be it health problems, be it engineering problems, be it legal, anything. You know, that takes me, sorry to cut you there, that takes me to uh, restructuring. Yes. Because I know you're a staunch believer of absolutely, restructuring. Absolutely, absolutely. And you said specifically in 2019 yes. uh, that, uh, that between the pro-anti and anti-restructuring, yes. uh, but, uh, well, do you think the 2023 election will bring up such debates as highlighted by you now, especially with the South uh, believing to hold the ace. The point is this. I believe, yeah. honestly, that the issue, we should zero down these next elections to one issue. And that is? Restructuring. Let, let that be the singular issue. Because I'll tell you something. We have groups that are separatists in Nigeria now. And to an extent, there is a limit to how much you can blame them. Nobody wants to stay in a house that appears to be falling. If this house starts crumbling now, we will start running around. We, we, we are looking for the muster points. So when people look at Nigeria and they say, Dude, are they safe? Are they not safe? Are they safe? Are they not safe? Maybe, what if I pull out, then maybe at least I can keep my space without falling. So all these factors have pointed out for a long time. We've seen it that if the structures that Nigeria are built upon, i.e. particularly the constitution that appears not to provide a fair ground and an in sufficiently inclusive ground for everyone, if something is not done, right, we will continue to rob each other in the wrong way. And instead of blending, we'll be causing friction. And I give it the example, it's just like an orchestra. Different people with different music. If you're not harmonized, you will play cacophony. It will be all noise. So what I am advocating in essence is that, look, whether we like it or not, restructuring has become the issue. And I hope that PDP takes off from where they left with the national conference they had in 2014 that Jonathan was not able to implement. The APC, too, at some point in time, has said they will restructure. So it means that everybody knows that the system can be improved upon. And it comes back to the debate. Because some of these key things, yes. because the party is still in power, yes. and that's the ruling party. So some of the key things they had yes. promised Nigerians yes. will come before the debate. What if, what if, because we've seen politicians say to the people and not for, for the debate, and they still go ahead to win an election. It simply means because they're so confident that people are not listening to the debates. And usually what happens is usually the person in power that dismisses the debates, which means he's relying on other things rather than what he has to say. Relying or what he has on to, other things. Absolutely. He's relying on the power of, uh, of, of, of uh, you know, incumbency, relying on using state resources to perpetrate themselves in power and to exclude others. I was going to ask you, because if you're not in government, because yeah. it has always been the culture yeah. in Nigeria, politically speaking, yeah. of not having a fundraiser, 
Yeah. How did you survive your election? You know, you know, I, I'll you, tell you. you, you the, you've never held a p p p political office. No. When I started off, I started off with, you know, what I call seed funds. Seed funds, modest funds. And my calculation was quite simple. Was that, yes, we, could not, we might not win because we're a small party. But we had a purpose, we had an agenda. We will affiliate with as many parties that have the same agenda. Unfortunately, the MOU upon which that coalition was supposed to stand was breached. And then again, you know, when people, my campaign really went pear-shaped when I got, never got invited to the debates. Because I believe that at the debates, I would have demonstrated, you know, some difference, you know. Um, so once your funders see that you're not on the debates, they tend to withdraw. Again, you know, a number of small parties must realize, and this is where we must credit the big parties. Both APC is a, is a combination of ACN and CPC. Both parties have a history. CPC has been contesting elections forever. They've been able to grow in the grassroots. ACN, you know what they did. And they combined. PDP, they started off, you know, there are things that may have, might have messed up each party, but the truth of the matter is that they, had a, they went through a learning curve, which many new parties are not ready to go through. My friends trying to do the thought force now, the thought force should have been ready in 2019. The day, the second day, Buhari was sworn in for a second term. The third force should have been ready. Should so, have been ready. So, so you think it's, it's almost it's late? It's absolutely too late. I can assure you, I guarantee you, it is too late. It is not going to happen. Because what you have now with the third force is that they are top heavy. The intellectuals are there. The elites are there. The people who know how to discuss with themselves are there. The people who understand how to read and digest and dissect manifestos are there. But how many people do they have on the streets? They don't. So, 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 so uh, as we wind down, because uh, I, as I said earlier, it's going to be a series till, till the election. Yeah. And I'm hoping that uh, you know, from time to time we'll reach out to you um, uh, to we'll uh, help to. us uh, unwrap some of the key know, things. I'm, I might yeah. be somebody else's <laughs> campaign director. You never <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> so so uh, the, uh, one last issue I want yeah. us to talk about here before we, we, we call this off is yeah. the issue of ethnicity yes. and religion. Yes. This is 2022 and is still very much dominant in, in Nigeria's politics. And it's a shame and it's a pity and I'm so sad about it because I went to a federal government college. And, of course, I'm from Lagos, and I'm a Yoruba. And anybody who is Yoruba knows that <laughs> you must have somebody in your family who is Christian, Muslim, and mm. traditional. So we, it's, not, it's not really a problem. It's never been a problem for me. However, when you have a system that is patently uh, uh, prone to be manipulated, that is not just, and you have a diversity that is not managed well. You see, in, when you have diversity and it's not managed well, you will end up having favorites and people disgruntled and people remembering that it is because I am from here, that is why I'm treated like this, or some people are from there. And unfortunately, the president, our sitting president, has not managed Nigeria's diversity well. The second mistake we have been making, which is for me a military mindset, it is a military mentality that has destroyed Nigeria. You don't unite people by forcing them to unite. You see, to unite people, right, you, you, you let them know what the other brings to the table that you don't have. It is when I know that you are bringing something different from me, but it's value adding, right, that I'll embrace you. But you can't forcefully tie people together. And this is what we are saying about the Constitution. The Constitution and its management and the way it manifests, right, does not aid 
national unity. So we can only speak about national unity. It puts too much power is in the hands of the president and the center, and they say uh, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, that's a fine place for us to uh, leave it today, but uh, quickly here, uh, you, you supporting anyone? Uh, I will be, well, all of the candidates have not come out now, but I, am, I, I pretty much have a good idea of who I will be supporting. Oh, the awesome. person is, has to be in support of restructuring. Mm -hmm. I believe in a zero tolerance for illiteracy. I believe in education. I believe all children must go back to school. I believe there should be zero tolerance for hunger. All these three children, I think that should go. So I, the person that I'm likely to support is someone that I know has demonstrated by his belief, his nature, his pedigree, that he's for those things, especially restructuring. I'll bring you back so that we can unveil that. Thank you very much. That person. <laughs> well, it's been an engaging session on the show today. Thanks for being such good company, Shino, Fagmar Byron, and uh, Honorable yes, Abdul Mumin Jibreen, who came early on the show. Many thanks for watching VSAM Suleiman. See you again. Bye bye. <laughs>